Okay, welcome to the main audio for Emotional Mastery. So let's talk about emotional mastery in more detail now. How can you manage your emotions? How can you uh, control? I don't like the word control, but let's just say manage your emotions so that you feel better and stronger while you're learning English. So it's easy to say that, oh, feel good when you're learning English. But unfortunately, a lot of people feel bad when they're learning English. A lot of people feel bored. Or maybe just in your life in general, you're, you're tired, you're working hard, and it's difficult to learn English also and still feel energetic and happy. So we have to learn some techniques, some methods to manage our emotions, to make sure our emotions are feeling strong while we're learning. And remember, again, that emotion and psychology are 80% of success. And a lot of people talk about this uh, in the academic world, Dr. Stephen Krash. And again, he's the top uh, expert on language acquisition, language learning, and language education. And he talks about this idea of non-linguistic factors, which basically means psychological and emotional factors, that they're more important than the method you're using. Tony Robbins, the famous uh, peak performance coach, talks about this as well. He says directly, success comes from emotion. 80% of success is emotion. The other 20% is the method. It's how you do it. So we've got to master our emotions to master English. How are you going to do that? Let's talk about that now. There are two keys to emotional mastery. One is your physiology. Again, it's your body, how you use and manage your body. And the second is your focus, your mental focus. Now, a lot of this comes from, again, uh, Tony Robbins and uh, Joe Vitale and some other uh, peak performance coaches. So I'm using their information and I'm applying it. I'm focusing it on this um, process of learning English and how can you take those ideas and use them to increase your English learning power so you learn faster so that you speak better. So again, we have two ways to manage our emotions. One is physiology through the body, and the other is through focus, mental focus, what you think about again and again and again. In this lesson, we're going to talk about physiology, managing physiology. So this is an easy way to change your emotional state. So let's imagine that you are tired. You've gone to work. You've worked a very long day. You're tired, and you're thinking, I don't want to study English. How can you change that feeling? Well, you can try to talk to yourself. Oh, I should study. I should study. I should feel better. But usually that doesn't work, right? Usually you still feel tired. What you have to do is start with your body. Change your body. What does your body look like when you're tired? Usually your shoulders are going to be forward. Is your head going to be up or is your head going to be down? Well, usually when you're tired, your head's going to be a little bit down. Your chin will be kind of down. What about your face? Will you have a big smile on your face or will your face be kind of loose? Well, it's usually going to be more loose, right? You're not usually smiling big when you feel tired. And your eyes, where are your eyes looking usually when you're tired? Again, down. So the whole body tends to be forward and down when you feel tired. So an easy, very simple way to change you, how you feel, how you physically feel, your emotion and in your body, is to just make small changes in the way you're using your body. Try it now. Lean forward. Put your shoulders forward. Put your chin down. Look down. Okay. Put your body into a tired position. Notice how you feel. Now let's change it. Pull your shoulders back and your chest up. Bring your chin up. Bring your eyes up. Look up. 
And now, even if you don't feel happy, I want you to smile really big. Put a big smile on your face. Fake it. Look stupid. Okay, so a big smile, shoulders back, chest up, eyes up, and a big stupid smile, a big grin on your face. Do you feel differently now? You probably do. Just by changing the position of your body, I'm doing it right now myself, I can feel that I feel more energetic. I feel happier. Just by shifting my body. When I go back and I put my shoulders forward and my chin down and my eyes down, I can feel some energy going down. Right, The energy in my body gets less. When I pull my shoulders back, my chest up, my chin up, my eyes up, I'm smiling big, just faking it, acting like a crazy person, I feel much better. And you do too. So that is such an easy way to change how you feel, to change your emotional state, just by shifting your body. It's a simple way to get control of your emotions and to master your emotions. So here's what I want you to do. Every time you listen to these lessons, or any English lessons, or any kind of English studying, I want you to first change your body. Before you listen to those lessons, and while you're listening, I want you to think about, consciously think about, pulling your shoulders back, pushing your chest up, chin up, eyes up, and make yourself smile. You probably didn't smile much in your English classes when you were younger, but this time I want you to smile even if you feel like you're being stupid. It doesn't matter. Do it. You're going to change your body, and by changing your body, you're going to feel better. You're going to have more energy. And when you have more energy, when you feel better, you learn faster. There's a lot of research about this. And it shows that people who have more energy, who are feeling good emotionally, learn faster. People who are tired and bored learn much more slowly. What's another way that you can change your emotion by changing your body? Well, another very easy way is through breathing. How you breathe determines the energy in your body and how you feel. For example, if you have a very shallow breath, you're breathing very shallowly. Small little breaths, tight chest. You're going to feel different than if you're taking big breaths that are deep. That was just two breaths. Already I can feel in my body a lot more energy. So taking deep breaths, it's, it's such a simple way, and yet it's very powerful. That's why in a lot of um, spiritual traditions, in Buddhism, for example, and also in martial arts, in sports, you find that they will focus on breathing. They will tell their students to breathe more deeply. They have a very kind of controlled way of breathing because they know by breathing very deeply... They can change their emotional state and their physical state, increase their energy, increase the aliveness in their brain, the alertness in their brain. So this is another thing I want you to do before you learn English. Any kind of studying, these lessons or a, a book, anything, I want you to focus on breathing deeply. Maybe just two minutes. For two minutes, I want you to take deep breaths. Hold it for maybe two, three, four seconds, and then let it out. And do it again. Hold it. And breathe out. And again, and again. One or two minutes, deep breathing. Of course, at the same time, remember, you're changing how your body is moving and how you're sitting. You're changing your posture. Of course, posture means body position. So you're going to have a strong posture. It means you're going to have the shoulders back, your chin up, your eyes up, chest out. That's number one. And then number two, you're going to breathe deeply. Hold. And then out. 
And again, so again, strong posture, shoulders back, chin up, eyes up, and then deep breathing. Do this for one or two minutes every time before you study English. I know it seems crazy. It seems so simple. And yet it will totally change the way you feel while you're learning. Because you will feel differently. You will learn differently. Just this simple, simple technique can increase your learning by two or three times. Two or three times faster. Because your brain will be awake when you're listening to English. When you're bored, when you're tired, your brain is half asleep. You're just not learning efficiently. When you're breathing deeply and your body is in a strong posture, you feel better and you learn faster. Of course, the next factor we already talked about a little bit is your face. You got to control your face. Why? Because your face shows emotion. But your face also can create emotion. Just by smiling big, pretending, looking like a stupid person, it doesn't matter. Just by faking it, just by making yourself smile big, you'll actually change your emotion. You'll change your feeling. It's very hard to feel depressed and tired when you have a big smile, even if you're forcing the smile. So that's another thing I want you to do. Everyone on the train will think you're crazy while you're listening to Effortless English, but I want you to have a big smile every time while you're listening to the lessons. Right now, do it. So you're going to have strong posture. You're going to breathe deeply. And you're going to smile big every time before, during, and after your English lessons. What's another way we can control our physiology and therefore influence our emotional state? Well, another thing about the body is the body likes to move. So we're going to talk about movement. You're going to have a strong posture. You're going to breathe deeply. You're going to have a big grin on your face, smiling, and then you're going to move. Because movement creates energy, and energy wakes up your body so that you learn faster. I mentioned this in the introduction a little bit. We're going to talk about it more now in detail. You should always be moving your body while you're learning English. This is the opposite of everything you learned in school. In school, they told you, don't move. Sit in your chair. Right? So, yeah, well, you're sitting in your chair. And what happened? Your body became stiff. You became tired. You're bored. Well, this is the opposite. You're not in school anymore. You're learning independently. It means you're in control now. And so I want you to do the opposite of what happened in school. I want you to move your body every time you're learning English. This can be very simple. If you're sitting in a train, okay, it's hard to uh, walk around. So you could just stretch your body. Consciously stretch, stretch your leg a little bit, stretch your arm, move your head around in a circle, small little stretches. Just make sure your body is moving even a little bit. Even better is to go for a walk. You have an iPod, you're listening to the lessons. Get outside. Walk on the street, walk in the country, walk in the woods. It doesn't matter. Get out and walk. Move that body. Keep your posture strong while you're walking, shoulders back, chin up, eyes up, chest up. Breathe deeply while you walk. And of course, smile big while you're walking. Everyone will think you're crazy. It doesn't matter. Use this system. I promise you, you're going to have a totally different experience while you're learning English. Nothing like the schools you went to before. So it's very important. If you want to, if you love to exercise, you can run while you're learning English. Put on your running shoes, get some exercise in your body at the same time that you're learning. You can do two things at the same time. So walk or run. Keep that body moving at the same time, always. It's going to keep energy coming into your body, flowing into your body. That wakes up your brain and that makes you learn so much faster. Another idea is go to the gym. 
You can go to the gym. Bring your iPod again and work out. Lift weights or do whatever you do at the gym. Again, you're using your body, engaging your body at the same time. Okay, so let me just review very quickly how you're going to use physiology to master your emotions. Number one, posture. Shoulders back, chin up, eyes up, chest up. Number two, breathing. <sighs> deep, deep breathing. Number three, your face. A big smile every time you're learning English. Even if you feel terrible, I don't care. Smile big while you're listening to these lessons. And then finally, number four, movement. You're always going to be moving your body somehow. If you're in your car, if you're in the train or the bus, you're going to maybe make small movements. But ideally, the best thing to do is to be outside walking, moving that body, or in the gym, or even running. So you're going to change your physiology. Now, what happens if after maybe 20 minutes, 30 minutes, you start to feel tired again? You're listening to the lesson, and you're starting to get a little bored. Oh, AJ keeps talking. Oh, God. Oh, I'm getting bored with this. Well, you can just quit. <laughs> That's what most people do, but don't do that. What you need to do is just wake your body up again. So pause. Pause that lesson. Stop. Give yourself a little break. Change. Listen to some exciting, fun music again. Get up. Dance around. Move. Smile big, get your posture stronger again, breathe more deeply, wake up your body, maybe for five minutes, and then back to the lesson again. Do this every time. Any time during a lesson you start to feel tired or bored, just pause, take a break, a five-minute break, and wake up your body. So any time during a mini-story, during a main article, during a vocabulary lesson, it doesn't matter. Pause any time you feel your energy going down. Change. Listen to your favorite music. Jump around. Move. Make your posture strong again. Smile bigger. Start feeling great. Get that energy in your body. Then return to the lesson again. Okay, so that's it for the main article here of Emotional Mastery. You're going to focus on your physiology. You're going to focus on mastering your body, using your body to change your emotions, using your body to change the energy that you feel, and therefore using your body to learn English much, much faster. Okay, I will see you next time. Bye-bye. Okay, welcome to the vocabulary lesson for Emotional Mastery. Let's get started. A few of the words I used in the uh, main speech, the main article. First, let's talk about posture. Posture. So posture means the position of your body. It's how you stand or sit. So we talk about good posture, for example. Good posture means your shoulders are back, your back is straight, your chin is up. That's what we usually call good posture. And bad posture would mean, you know, again, you're, you're, you're leaning forward, your shoulders are forward, your back is not straight. So again, posture just means the, the position of your body, how you position your body, how you hold your body. That's posture. Another word I used was grin. A grin can be a noun, it's a thing, or it can be a verb, it's something you do. So to grin means to smile, but to smile in a big way. When you grin, you're not using a small smile, you're using a very, very big smile. Again, it's also a noun, so if you have a very big smile on your face, we say that is a grin. He has a big grin. You could use both, I guess. You could say, he is grinning a big grin. <laughs> okay, so grin, again, is a large smile or the act of doing a large smile. Another phrase I used was, tends to be. Right? Uh, he tends to be an angry person. Tends to be means um, usually is. Usually is. So he usually is a, an angry person. He tends to be an angry person. So it's something that usually happens, usually is true, mostly is true. 
but not always. Not always. So I could say, um, Tomoe tends to be happy. It means she usually is happy. It's her normal thing to do or normal thing to feel. But not always. Sometimes she's not happy. So tends to be, uh, usually is or uh, often is or um, mostly is. Okay, another word I used was uh, shifting, shifting your body. And it's the verb is to shift. To shift your body means to move it. It really means kind of to change its position. A shift is a change of position. So if I have my head down and then I shift it, then maybe I move it to a different position. Now it's up. I shifted from down to up. We use this in other areas, not just body. Uh, you can use it for driving, for example. When you're driving, you can shift from first gear to second gear. Or reverse, you're going backwards, then you stop, you shift the car, and you change and you go forward. So again, you're, you're changing the gear position. Okay, so shift is a change in position. I use the word shallow, shallow breath, or shallow breathing. And I also use the word deep, deep breathing, or a deep breath. So they're opposites, of course. Deep, we also use this with water, for example. Deep water means uh, water that goes down very far. Shallow water means just water that's not very deep, right? It's the opposite. Water that does not go down far. So, shallow breathing is the same idea. It means uh, breathing that is very small, that doesn't go down into your body very much. So, <laughs> that's shallow breathing, right? It's small little breaths. The air does not go down deep into the body. That's shallow breath or shallow breathing, if we talk about an action. And the opposite is deep. Deep breathing is, right? The air goes down into my body very far, very deeply. But shallow does not go deeply. Okay, so we use this a lot with breathing. Shallow breathing and deep breathing. They're opposites. Another word I use is force. To force, using it as a verb, an action. To force something or to force yourself to do something. It's a very common phrase. The whole thing again. To force yourself to do something. For example, force yourself to smile. So force means to try hard. It has an idea that you don't want to do it but you do it anyway. You make yourself do something difficult. You make yourself do something maybe you don't want to do. So you use effort, you use uh, your energy, you use your power to do something. So when you force something, it's the opposite of really relaxed. It's the opposite of doing it effortlessly. So force yourself to smile means use your energy. Make yourself smile. Even if you don't want to, use energy, force it, try hard to smile. So that's to force yourself to do something. Another word I use uh, is depressed or depression. So depression is the noun depressed is the feeling it's the, it's an adjective like i feel depressed it's how you feel so depressed means very very sad feeling very very sad and bad about yourself about your life about everything so if you say i'm sad usually that's more specific you have a reason i'm sad about something i'm sad because i lost my job but if you're depressed, it's, it's a very more 
general kind of feeling. You're depressed about everything, usually. I'm depressed because I lost my job and I have no money and I don't have a girlfriend. Like many reasons. Depression is deeper than just sadness. So again, to be depressed, you say, I am depressed. Or I have depression. This is a general kind of uh, rule in English. Uh, it's not always, but generally, we say, I have a noun, a thing. I have depression. Not, I have depressed. Say, I have depression. But if you're talking about an adjective, then you use am. I am depressed. So they, they mean basically the same thing. I have depression means I have the feeling of being depressed. <laughs> Uh, I am depressed is more common. It just seems I feel very, very, very sad. Okay, well, that is the end of the vocabulary lesson for emotional mastery. Listen to it a couple times. Uh, in general, the vocabulary lessons are the least important lesson. So if you listen to them a few times, if they're boring, if you understand them all, it's fine. You can skip the vocabulary. I want you to focus mostly on the, the main article, the main speech, and on the mini-story. Those are the two most important lessons. The vocabulary gives you a quick little lesson about some of the words and phrases. Listen to it a few times until you know these words. But once you know the words, focus on the main story, the main article, and on the mini-story. Okay, I will uh, see you in the next lesson. Bye-bye. Okay, welcome to the mini-story for Emotional Mastery. Let's get started. Vanilla wanted to be rich. Who wanted to be rich? Vanilla. Vanilla wanted to be rich. Who was Vanilla? Well, Vanilla was a beautiful, intelligent woman. What kind of woman was Vanilla? She was a beautiful, intelligent woman. And what did she want? She wanted to be rich. She said, Show me the money! What did she say? She said, show me the money! Who wanted a lot of money? Vanilla. Vanilla wanted a lot of money. She was beautiful. She was intelligent. But, unfortunately, she was poor. So Vanilla went to Las Vegas. She went to Las Vegas to get rich. Where did she go? Las Vegas. Why did she go to Las Vegas? To get rich, of course. She went to Las Vegas to get rich. Who went to Las Vegas to get rich? Vanilla. Vanilla went to Las Vegas to get rich. She walked into Caesar's Palace. Where did she go? Caesar's Palace. She walked into Caesar's Palace. Did she run into Caesar's palace or did she walk into Caesar's palace? She walked. She walked calmly into Caesar's palace. What is Caesar's palace? It's a casino. Caesar's palace is a casino. 
Did vanilla go to a casino in Japan? No, 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 no. She didn't go to a casino in Japan. She went to a casino in Las Vegas. What was the casino's name? Caesar's Palace. The casino's name was Caesar's Palace. And where was it? Las Vegas. It was in Las Vegas. She walked into Caesar's Palace with a big grin on her face. Was Vanilla happy or sad? She was happy. She had a big grin on her face, a big, huge smile. Was she grinning or was she frowning? She was grinning. She had a big smile on her face. She was grinning. Who? Who was grinning? Vanilla. Vanilla was grinning. When was she grinning? When she walked into Caesar's palace. Uh -huh. When she walked into Caesar's palace, she was grinning. Why? Well, because she thought she was going to become rich. She was grinning because she thought she was going to become rich. In fact, she knew she was going to become rich. Why was she grinning? Because she knew she was going to become rich. She walked to the blackjack table. Which table did she walk to? The blackjack table. She walked to the blackjack table. Did she walk to the poker table? No, 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 no. Not the poker table. She walked to the blackjack table. Who walked to the blackjack table? Vanilla. Vanilla walked to the blackjack table. What was she doing? When she walked to the blackjack table, she was grinning. Of course, she was grinning when she walked to the blackjack table. She took out money from her pocket. How much money did she take out of her pocket? Six thousand dollars. She took six thousand dollars out of her pocket. Where did she take it out of? Out of her pocket. She took six thousand dollars out of her pocket. Whose pocket? Oh, Vanilla's. Vanilla's pocket. Of course, her own pocket. She took six thousand dollars. Out of her own pocket, she put the money on the table. She bet all of the money on the first game. How much money did she bet? Well, all of it, all six thousand dollars. She bet all six thousand dollars. And did she win or did she lose? Well, Vanilla lost. Vanilla lost all her money. She was really, really poor. She cried. Oh no! I lost all my money. <laughs> Well, 
What about Warren Buffett? Hmm? Who's Warren Buffett? Warren Buffett is the richest man in the world. Does Warren Buffett play blackjack? No, Warren Buffett does not play blackjack. What does he do? He buys stocks. Hmm? He buys what? He buys stocks. Stocks are parts of companies, like a piece of a company. So Warren Buffett buys stocks. He goes to New York and he buys stocks. So Warren Buffett went to New York at the same time that Vanilla went to Las Vegas. When Vanilla was in Las Vegas, where was Warren Buffett? New York. He was in New York. Warren Buffett was in New York when Vanilla was in Las Vegas. Did Warren Buffett lose money in New York or make money? He made money. He made sixty billion dollars. How much money did Warren Buffett make? He made sixty billion dollars. How much did Vanilla make? Zero. She made no money. In fact, she lost money. Vanilla lost six thousand dollars. Warren Buffett made sixty billion. Did Vanilla grin? Well, no. First, she cried, <laughs> but then she changed her physiology. She pulled back her shoulders. She put her chin up, and she grinned. She said, "I will become rich." Did Warren Buffett grin after he made sixty billion dollars? No, he didn't grin. He frowned. Warren Buffett. Always frowns. Who frowned? Warren Buffett frowned. And who grinned? Well, Vanilla grinned. She cried, and then she grinned. Next, Vanilla went to Alaska. Why did she go to Alaska? She went to Alaska to dig for gold. What did she want to do? She wanted to dig for gold. Who wanted to dig for gold? Vanilla. Vanilla wanted to dig for gold. So she got a shovel. And she started to dig. Every day, she dug for gold. Five days, ten days, digging for gold, digging for gold. After sixty days, her back hurt. Why did Vanilla's back hurt? Because she had bad posture, of course. Vanilla had bad posture while she was digging. Did she have good posture, or did she have bad posture? Vanilla had bad posture while she was digging. What kind of posture did Vanilla have? Bad. She had bad. Posture. Was her back straight, or was it bent? It was bent. 
Her back was bent. She had bad posture while she was digging for gold. Where did she have bad posture? Well, in Alaska, she had bad posture in Alaska while she was digging for gold. When? When did she have bad posture? While she was digging for gold. After ninety days, Vanilla's back hurt, and she had no money. She started to cry. <laughs> My back hurts, and I have no money. Did she cry? Did she feel bad? Was she depressed? Yes, Vanilla was depressed. How did she feel? Depressed. Was she super sad? Yes, she was depressed. Why was Vanilla depressed? Because her back hurt, and she had no money. But then Vanilla changed. She changed her posture again. She smiled. She brought her shoulders back. She breathed deeply. <sighs> She said, "I will become rich." So she went to Singapore. Where did Vanilla go next? Singapore. That's right. Of course, Singapore. She went to Singapore. Why did she go to Singapore? Well, it's obvious. She went to Singapore to start a chili business. What kind of business did she start? A chili business, not a cold business. <laughs> chili, C H I L I, little peppers that you eat, very spicy. She started a chili business. Okay, so she grew chilies in her apartment. She grew chilies, hot chilies, in her apartment, and sold them to restaurants. So she grew broccoli in her apartment, and she sold them to restaurants. Not broccoli, chilies. Not broccoli, chilies. She grew chilies in her apartment, and she sold them to restaurants. What did she sell? Chilies, hot chilies. She sold hot chilies to restaurants. In which city? Singapore. In Singapore, she sold hot chilies to restaurants. Where did she grow the chilies? She grew them in her apartment. She grew them in her apartment. Then she sold them to restaurants. What did she sell to restaurants? Hot chilies. She sold hot chilies to restaurants. So, what did Vanilla want? Vanilla wanted to be rich. Where did she go first? Las Vegas. She first went to Las Vegas. She played blackjack. She lost all her money. Where did she go next? Alaska. She went to Alaska. She dug for diamonds, and she got a bad, painful back. 
No, 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 no. She didn't dig for diamonds. She dug for gold. She went to Alaska. She dug for gold. But her posture was bad, so her back hurt. No money and a painful back. And finally, she went to Singapore. She grew hot chilies in her apartment and sold them to restaurants. And she made $28 billion. She became the queen of hot chilies. The Asian queen of hot chilies. Vanilla became super rich. She got the money. Did Vanilla become super rich? Oh, yes, she did. How much money did she make? Twenty-six billion dollars? Oh, no. Twenty-seven billion dollars? No, no, no. Twenty-eight billion dollars. Vanilla made twenty-eight billion dollars. She was beautiful. She was intelligent. And finally, she was super rich. Okay, that is the end of the mini-story for Emotional Mastery. How about you? Was your posture good during this lesson? Were you smiling while you listened? Were you breathing deeply while you listened? Were you moving your body as you listened to this story? I hope so. You should. If not, it's okay, but next time, next time, be sure, strong posture, deep breathing, big grin, and moving your body as you listen to the story. And one more thing you can do, if you're at home, if you can be loud, you can listen to the story and shout your answers. So if I say, what was her name, you shout, Vanilla! You can do this in the train or the bus, too, if you want to. In San Francisco, we have a lot of crazy people. So if you do something like this, nobody cares. So you can do that, too. But if you feel strange about shouting in public, then maybe do it at home. If you listen at home, you know, stand up, move your body, and shout the answers. Loud, strong posture. Don't be shy about speaking English. Teach yourself to be strong when you speak English. And remember, posture... Breathing, big smile, big grin, and move your body as you listen to every lesson. Okay, I will see you next time. Bye-bye.